Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. You can tell by the noise in the background that I got that generator fired up. Um, it's kind of dark out. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see. I don't know, could you see any of that? So, it's about 5 o'clock. It's why it's so dark. Um, actually, for 5 o'clock it's pretty light out. It is still Friday the 19th, and that's about that from that guy. And for centigrade, what, rat? About 2.8, so yeah, about a quarter to five, somewhere around five o'clock. So, you can hear the engine running in the background. What that should tell you is that I managed to get it started, a good thing. So, so far, the repair is working. These lights on the uh, garage, those are those uh, solar things from uh, Harbor Freight. They got that little module on the end there, little solar collector on it. Um, during the summer, when the sun is strong, they're on for quite a while. What? She locked you out because you were being a pest. This generator is uh, noisy, to say the least. Um, it's going to be hard to hear what I'm up to, but you'll be able to see the gauge and hopefully the watt meter. So hopefully that'll tell you what you need to know. Anyway, so that hurts. That's the wattage. That's the voltage. in the grinder for a lap. So, uh, this thing, uh, as you can see, I could get it started up again. If I'm running just the grinder, it seems to do okay. Basically, if I ask more than 500 watts out of this thing, it gets into trouble. But you can see it does run a compact fluorescent, and it does run a normal light. Um, I'd wrap the rope around and refire it for you, but she is a little bit of a fussy starter. So, from a, what would I run on this point of view, I would probably just use it around, um, just, just for, uh, just for lights and an occasional, um, appliance with brushes in it. I would not run my refrigerator on it. I would not run anything else. This thing is strictly, a uh, lights and grinder, drill, circular saw, one item at a time type thing. It's good for about 500 watts. After that, she, uh, she gets cranky. She gets cranky quick. All right, folks. So, sorry about the darkness. Um, once again, I got one more that I want to I get fired up and do the testing on. That'll be one of these guys which you can't see because it's too dark. Um, yeah, that'll be one of these guys. You know, your typical Briggs & Stratton engine, 
10 horsepower driving a big generator head so yeah there's like you can see another one back there a porter power there's a porter power there's three of them I think one's a Briggs and Stratton and one's a Toro the Toro threw a rod the Briggs and Stratton I think has a good engine and the porter cable has a good generator head though the generator head looks like the same on all of them so anyway I'm supposed to combine these and come up with uh, one or two live ones out of all three of them all right folks no one of them's complete actually the uh, that one there where the Briggs and Stratton I think is complete I just need to fix the recoil then I need to combine the porter cable and the Toro and come up with one out of those two all right, folks, thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. It was uh, a lot of fun um, playing with the lathe and getting this thing, getting the old Gillette to fire up. Just in case anybody wants to see the tag on it, it says it's good for a thousand watts there, right here. Um, 60 cycle Gillette manufacturing. Yeah, one of the um, one of my YouTubers, I think, drives a truck and delivers in Pigeon. Was that Pigeon? Um, Pigeon, uh, Michigan, White Pigeon, Michigan. Yeah, I think one of my YouTubers delivers there. I don't know if Gillette Manufacturing is still alive. I think um, I've seen Gillette generators floating around. Um, but I don't, I don't know if it's just a name, right? Like Honeywell puts their name on cameras and all kinds of amazing stuff. I don't, they don't make hardly any of it anymore. This thing has a old fashioned fuse. Just spin it out uh, and replace it that way. You can see the brushes there. The one good thing about this generator though, if you get one of them uh, Y2K pulses, you know, somebody shoots off a uh, some electromagnetic wave. Um, this generator would survive that because it has no electronics in it. It, it really is simply a uh, an engine with points um, turning a generator. It's got, I think it's got absolutely no control to get the frequency to where I needed it to be I adjusted this knob here right there where my finger is um, but as I adjusted that knob the um, frequency came in but the voltage went up it came up from uh, 50 52 Hertz I got it to sit right at 60 Hertz but the the problem is the um, the voltage also went up from um, um, like 135 to 146 so it's not it's not controlled very well all right folks thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing um, if you find one of these at a flea market and you want to buy it just as a toy to own not a bad thing to do if you want to buy it to uh, try to run some of your electronics you're better off with this piece of crap I mean, that one is really bad. Even if, uh, even you could see, even with just lights on at a steady state load, it, um, it the voltage was just way too high. Um, folks, remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and enjoy all your days. Even if you spend them playing with a lathe and getting a worthless generator running that I'll never really use uh, for anything. But it is fun to own and it is fun to have. But once again, from a practical point of view, you don't want to expose too much more than a circular saw or a light bulb to that thing. Anyway, bye now, folks.